Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing a follow-up to my Packard Bell Navigator retrospective and demo video that I did a couple of days ago. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll have it up in the cards if you want to go check it out. Basically what we did is we took a look at Packard Bell Navigator, which is an alternative shell for Windows 3.1 and Windows 95 that was pre-installed on Packard Bell computers beginning in the early 1990s. And as we typically do with older software, I'll typically do a retrospective or a demo video, and then we take a look at running that software on Windows 10 and seeing if it is possible. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. And a few of you guys suggested this video. Uh, so here are some comments from you guys. Thank you so much for suggesting this one. And we're going to jump right into it. So as I mentioned in my Microshaft on Windows 10 video at the end where we talked about that poll of choosing between a 32-bit version of Windows 10 or a 64-bit version of Windows 10 to run these programs, and in that Twitter poll, the 32-bit version of Windows 10 won. So that's what we're going to be using to run these programs. We've got the same two versions of Packard Bell Navigator that we took a look at in that retrospective video. This right here is version 1.0 in this PB front folder, and then we have Navigator 3.0. Five, uh, which consists of these two folders right here. So we're going to do exactly the same thing that I did to get Packer Bell Navigator 1.0 working in that Windows 3.1 virtual machine. And that is we have to copy this PB front folder to the root of the C drive. So we're just gonna copy this here or just move it rather. And since this is a 32-bit copy of Windows 10, we don't need to have OTVDM to run 16-bit applications because the NT virtual DOS machine, NTVDM, is uh, included with the 32-bit release of Windows 10. So the executable we have to run is navigate.exe right here. So we're gonna run this. And you'll see that the system will ask us to install NTVDM since it does not come installed by default. But instead of just displaying an error message like we would get in Windows 10 uh, 64 bit, usually a smart screen like error where it says this app can't run on your PC, it'll give us uh, the option to install NTVDM. So it's going to ask us to restart the computer, although it says you might need to restart. Oh, just apps that require this feature. So we don't have to restart the entire system. So, oh, there we go. So it's just gonna open right up. So here is Packard Bell Navigator 1.0. Now, yes, Windows Explorer is still in the background because uh, we still have it set as the default shell and Navigator is not set to start up before Windows Explorer, although we will be getting into that later on in this video. I just wanna kind of go through and take a look at each of these options to see which of them work and which of them don't. So we'll start with getting started here. Get S8E41 caused a general protection fault in module get start.exe. So it's trying to load another executable and then it immediately crashes so we can try let's see if we can no we haven't uh, run this in compatibility mode or anything like that uh, so it's trying to launch get start.exe and this is that full screen uh, getting started tutorial we're going to try to apply a compatibility layer so we're going to open up the uh, properties panel for get start.exe we'll go to compatibility and we'll change this to windows 95 and we'll choose to run it as an admin as well and we'll see if that fixes the problem so we'll run the executable here and here's that UAC prompt we'll click on yes and no it looks like that does not solve the problem for us so that is unfortunate that general protection fault error came up once again but this is not the only thing we have in here we've got tutorials and previews so this takes us to this menu right here I wouldn't think any of these would work yeah because it's not gonna be able to find uh, the program although the Windows tutorial did work in Windows 3.1 because that came with Windows 3.1 this is supposed to launch the Windows 3.1 tutorial. Obviously, we don't have that in Windows 10, but we don't have any of these other programs either, and we didn't have them in Windows 3.1, and that's because we did not restore uh, like this operating system from a Packard Bell Restore CD. Obviously, that wouldn't be possible with Windows 10 here, but uh, Packard Bell Navigator requires some of these other programs that would come already pre-installed on your Packer Bell computer uh, to have these links function properly because this is gonna open things like the Packer Bell tutorial, the productivity pack. Now we have service and support. So this, this service and support uh, program right here is probably gonna do the exact same thing. Uh, and cause that general protection fault error because uh, this is essentially the same type of program as uh, 
the getting started program here so that's not going to work upgrade info is the same story there it's going to cause a general protection fault uh, registration info this brings up our little registration card here this is just the one for your records you wouldn't be able to like submit this to Packard Bell over the internet if you wanted to register your computer with Packard Bell you would have to mail in that registration card that came with your system and finally we have system information which is this is exactly what it did in Windows 3.1 it tries to find this .pif file and it's not able to find it so uh, that is something that would have come pre-installed on your Packard Bell computer now software this is going to be interesting because uh, well all of these programs are not going to be installed on the computer I do want to take a look at the games though because you can see here that off camera I installed uh, this is the Microsoft Entertainment Pack at least volume one and so and we actually did a tech experiment of trying to get these programs to work in Windows 10 and as you're going to see in a moment here they do work but if you want to check out that video I'll have it up in the cards and this is again only volume one so it's not all of the programs but Packard Bell computers did come with some of the uh, Microsoft Entertainment Pack games and in this case because we've got Pack 1 installed we can actually launch games like Pegged we can launch Cruel. So these two work, none of these other ones do, including Minesweeper, even though that Pack 1.0, if I go into this PC here, and we have this installed to the default directory, CWEP, uh, Pack 1.0 comes with Minesweeper, this is it right here. But Windows 3.1 came pre-installed with Minesweeper, so that leads me to believe that this tile is pointing to that file location as opposed to the one in the Windows Entertainment Pack. So I would think my theory is that if you could figure out whatever directory that all of these um, tiles or, or launchers were pointing to, you could just put an executable file there and it should be able to launch the program. I mean, that's evident with pegged and cruel here. So that is the game section. We also have utilities. And this is going, so we've got again, system info, clock settings, sound settings. These are Windows control panel applets. And they do, wow, check that out, they do still work here in Windows 10 um, because they do utilize the same um, file name. So it's able to open up the date and time preferences sound. Uh, this is just going to open up a, the Packard Bell Navigator specific sound settings. Uh, system info, this is the same um, launcher that was located in service and support, so that's not going to open up either. Startup options is a Packard Bell Navigator specific setting and this just allows you to choose if you want to start up with Packard Bell Navigator or Windows. This is not really going to take effect though in a Windows NT based operating system. MS-DOS, this will try to find a non-existent DOS PRMPT.PIF which does not exist here in Windows 10. Uh, we can launch, like we can launch command.com since this is a 32-bit release of Windows. And this is command.com rather than cmd.exe. So it, it also calls itself Microsoft Windows DOS. Uh, and the copyright date is 1990 to 2001. Uh, so yeah, you know, we can, there you go. Although when you type ver, it will report the... Uh, correct Windows 10 version here. Um, so this does not work. Format disk uh, will, this is just, it appears to be a standard Packard Bell tool that would come with uh, Packard Bell Navigator uh, because this is not the standard Windows format tool. And we have disk image, which does not work either. Personal software, this will be interesting to see if this works. So this is that uh, uh, section where you can set up your own application. So none of these are going to work here. So we're going to change this to the add mode we will add a program let's select um let's actually go to windows entertainment pack let's select golf.exe we'll add that unfortunately we don't get the icons for the programs here in windows 10 which is kind of unfortunate but they do launch uh, now i want to see if we can do this with a modern windows application so let's choose you can see that we have the uh short file names uh, protocol being adhered to here since Windows 3.1 did not support long file names. So we have, uh, this is program files, but it's calling itself P-R-O-G-R-A tilde one, just to shorten it there. So we'll go in here, we're gonna go into the Internet Explorer folder, which is this one here. And yes, we are going to uh, select iExplore.exe. So we'll add that. Oh, and then this one gets the icon. Okay, so we can change the name to Internet Explorer, the best web browser ever. So we'll launch this. And check that out, here is Internet Explorer opening up through Packard Bell Navigator, pretty awesome. So this can be used to launch modern Windows programs, uh, which I wouldn't really see why it couldn't do that, but uh, just for those who are wondering, yes, you can do that. 
So that is the personal software section, and that pretty much ends it off for Packerball Navigator 1.0. We can uh, choose to exit back to Windows, which is what this will do. It'll just close the program, and let's see what exits MS-DOS does. We'll say yes. And wow, that will log you out of your Windows session. Okay, that's pretty cool. So that kind of reminds me of, of what we saw in the uh, massive Windows upgrade special that I did for my 5,000 subscriber video uh, where we were able to launch the MS-DOS executive in Windows 7 and choose to end your Windows session. It actually logged you out of Windows. So we have this the same thing going on there, which is pretty awesome. So uh, yeah, Packerball Navigator 1.0. Now, one thing that I want to do, and this was suggested uh, specifically by Maddie MJD, who said that why don't you try to set this as the default window shell, which you can do from the registry editor. So we'll launch regedit here. The key we have to modify is HK local machine software, Microsoft, Windows NT. Uh, scroll down here, current version, and it's under win logon. And it is this shell um, entry right here. So the shell is explore.exe, which is the default Windows shell. But let's see if we were to change this. So let's go to this PC, local disk C, um, PB front. And so we'll copy this directory here. And the uh, file name is navigate.exe. So we'll just copy this just so we have the full file name there. So there we go, C, PB front, navigate.exe. So we'll click OK. And then what we have to do is log out of our Windows session. So we will, uh, we gotta go to our user icon here, at least I believe, yep, sign out. And now when we sign back in, check that out, it actually works. So here is Packer Bell Navigator starting up. And you can see that Explorer is not even started in the background, which is how that this would behave. Although with the program manager, obviously if you're running this under Windows 3.1, uh, although, Navigate cause a general protection fault. Oh, the whole program just crashed. Okay, so it kind of works. I mean, it's able to launch it and like have it set as the default shell, but it just crashes and gives one of those general protection fault errors, which is interesting. Uh, so we can try, let's just try to uh, run it again. Click OK. So here it is starting up, um, but we can try, I mean, we can launch these programs again, although we have to go under games, like let's launch Cruel, there we go. We can go under personal software, launch Internet Explorer. So we can utilize this. I mean, we, we just had to relaunch it there. Now let's see if normally when you were to click uh, exit to Microsoft Windows, this should open up either the program manager or Explorer. Let's see what it does. So exit to Windows, oh, it just minimizes Navigator. So it does not launch Explorer.exe. Although this specific version was released at a time when Windows 95 didn't exist. So you can't expect it to know to launch Explorer.exe. But future versions of this, like version 3.5 that we're gonna take a look at momentarily, when you click on exit to Windows, it should open up Explorer because that's what it would do in Windows 95. Now we're gonna move on to Navigator 3.5. Now this requires a little bit of um, extra steps to get this running because this is not normally how you would install this on a Packerbell machine. Again, this would come pre-installed with Windows and if you were to use that master restore disk uh, to reinstall, to set your computer back to factory settings, Navigator would come already you know, pre-installed and set up for you to use. But since this is not a Packer Bell computer, um, what we have to do is uh, open up File Explorer here. And just like we did with Navigator 1.0, we have to copy this folder right here, this nav folder to the root of the C drive. So this contains all of the Navigator files in here. So you can see these are them right here. But then we have to go into this ODBC INST folder and launch this setup executable right here. And this installs the Microsoft Open Database Connectivity uh, components, which is uh, a set of components that Navigator 3.5 relies on. So we'll click on continue here. Now we have to install this Access 2.0 for MS Office driver right here. So we'll click OK. That will install it. Now we have to choose this add option right here. We have to choose this uh, driver right here, so we'll click OK. And now it's gonna say that it cannot find uh, a valid version. We have to manually specify. We have to go into, uh, so we go to the root of the C drive, into the uh, nav folder, and then we have to go into the DB folder, and then we have to find, so here's the file right here. We'll click OK. And we have to manually specify the data source name as arc language resources. 
no description, the username is going to be admin, we have to select database, and in that same folder choose language.mdb, click OK, click OK here, and close, and it's been successfully installed, so now we should be able to go into the nav folder, and launch, I believe it's just nav.exe. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from, Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. So check that out. So not only does the program open up and work, but we also get that voiceover that we could not take a look at in the previous video because my Packard Bell machine does not have a set of speakers. So yeah, we get the voiceover and check this out. I didn't even realize this was a thing. The Navigator map, we can actually go beyond just the living room into this other room over here, this other section of our virtual property here. I didn't even realize this was in here, which is pretty cool. Because uh, yeah, I did not demonstrate this in the previous video. So this is your workspace room. You've got uh, some shortcuts here, games category. Uh, yeah, you've got like MS Hearts here. And we get a unable to launch error, although this time it does uh, give the exact location of the executable file that it was looking for, which is pretty cool. But yeah, I didn't even realize that, although maybe this is a newer version that had this included, because the version that we took a look at in the previous video, I don't remember, well, I, I see there's no option here. Oh, this home button, you can click on that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, I have not used Packard Bell Navigator exclusively. Um, like as the, like I never use, actually this Packer Bell computer that I have is the very first Packer Bell computer that I've owned. So that gives you an idea. I've never really used Navigator before. Um, I did obviously use it uh, before demonstrating it in the previous video to get familiar with it, but I didn't even realize that this Navigator, uh, that this home button up here, you can click on this and get to this map here. So that's pretty cool. You see this over here, it says placeholder, like placeholder for home info room, placeholder for home workspace help message. That's interesting. So there's supposed to be like a help message here, I guess, but it doesn't show up. It just says there's this placeholder. So that's interesting. Uh, I would assume it's supposed to have a message like it does here when you mouse over like the answering machine or whatever. Uh, so let's see if we can go to the task jumper here and let's say write a letter. Going to launch Microsoft Works, we don't now again, we don't have all of this software installed so it's, so you can't expect it to launch programs that don't exist. But in theory, if a executable file was there, even if it's not Microsoft Works, it should be able to open it. In fact, let's test that theory. So we'll go to games here. We'll go to, let's say, Solitaire. This is trying to find C, Windows, SOL, or Sol.exe. So we'll open up Windows Explorer here, and let's just go to the C drive, go into Windows, and let's make a copy of RegEdit here. So we'll copy this, paste it, and then we'll rename this to Sol.exe, and we'll change it, and authorize the file operation there. And now, boom, there you go. So it's able to launch, although it didn't launch RegEdit, that's interesting. Let's try something that doesn't require a user account uh, control. Let's maybe do Explorer. So we'll delete Sol.exe. We'll make a copy of Explorer. And we'll just do the same thing. So we'll name this Sol.exe. And we'll confirm the file operation there. So there we go. Now we can go to our task jumper, games, solitaire. And there we go, so this opens up. So the user account control is causing a bit of interference there uh, with getting the, the program to work, but it does open up, so here it is. So yeah, I don't really see why this wouldn't work. I mean, I kind of expected it to work because this is just pointing to, I mean, these are basically shortcuts. They're pointing to the location of an EXE file. So if there's an EXE file in that location that it's pointing to with the same name, it'll open it, as we just saw. Uh, one thing I want to do is let's go to the info room here and first let's try out the clock. So let's click on the clock here and just like a Navigator 1.0 this will open up the date and time preferences here which is pretty cool so that still works. What is different though is in the previous video on the Packer Bell computer this tutorials area it had like some books here on this shelf here. This time it just shows this blank glass almost like a window here and this does require the uh, Packer Bell Navigator. This, this application requires the CD titled Packer Bell Navigator, which we don't have. But yeah, we'll go to the software room here because this is essentially the same 
functionality as the software launcher from Packerball Navigator 1.0. And yeah, I'm starting to believe that this is a different version than what we took a look at in the previous video because this box art is different than what we saw. And it's not like it's pulling this from somewhere else, like, because these programs are not installed. Uh, so this is just the box art that it displays by default here. Obviously, all these programs are not going to launch because they are not installed. Uh, although we can go to software accessories and we can launch things like, probably not the DOS prompt, but we should be able to launch Notepad. So there we go. Same with backup and uh, format disk. But Notepad works, so you can still launch Notepad from here. Uh, what I want to do is add our own programs, just like we did in the original, or in uh, Packerball Navigator 1.0. So we're going to add already installed software to Navigator. We'll choose Internet Explorer once again, and we'll add that to the list. And then let's do Command Prompt as well. We'll add that. We'll add Narrator, why not? Click on Done. So there we go. So we can launch Internet Explorer. We can click on that. Here we go. And uh, Command Prompt will you know work just as you would expect it to. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to try to set this as the default shell and see how Windows handles that. So we're going to close out of it by clicking on uh, this button up here. And we will say sure, because we do want to show the introduction screen. Now you'll notice the entire time that that was running, there was no um, icon down here in the taskbar. Uh, so just wanted to point that out there. But we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna launch regedit. And we're going to change the shell entry this time. Let's just get this uh, exactly right here. We'll go to C, this is under nav, and it's called uh, nav.exe. So we're going to copy this here and then nav.exe, click OK, and then we're going to, once again, exit our Windows session. So we'll sign out, and we'll sign back in. Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose. So there we go, it brings up Packard Bell Navigator without Explorer running in the background. It gives us, you know, the same voiceover, the same error message here, it says unable to run workspace because not all components are present, but the program stays running and we can go, let's say we want to go to the software room and load up Internet Explorer. There we go, that works, command prompt works. So yes, you could, you could have this as your default shell in Windows 10, which is just kind of crazy to think about. Um, yes, this does work. Now let's see if we can exit out of it and if it will launch Explorer. So we'll close, click OK and it doesn't appear to launch Explorer for us. So we would have to do that manually. So there you have it, guys. To answer the question, is it possible to run Packer Bell Navigator 1.0 and 3.5 on Windows 10? The answer is yes, absolutely. The programs work. Obviously, not all of the functionality of these programs work. And not only can you run the programs, but you can set them as your default window shell, which is just really cool to see. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you wanna see more like it, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week on this channel. And as always guys, I wanna thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.